protecting, you know, against this discrimination and against people with albinism. Um, it's a very wide field, you know, very, very wide field of different kind of social projects. We have people that have agroforestry, so agriculture, so uh, environmental friendly um, agriculture, um, there is uh, water shedding programs. It is an orphanage for the children with a disability and for the non-disabled children. I realize the children with a disability, they are not getting enough opportunity to lead independent life. Mostly they are staying in the orphanage itself. That made me to think to something how to do for them. Then I got a dream, something, a place where the people can live, learn, work and generate income. And with the dream I was looking for a place where can I you know, enlarge my dream to how to make it realize. Then I found Kantari. And in 2012, I was in the Kantari, the seven-month training <coughs> program, where I got hands-on tools, how to run the project, how to raise money, how to communicate with the people, and uh, how to create a curriculum for the children with a disability. It's all, uh, you know, they're giving a space for you to explore yourself. So that's the training program. Later on, in 2013, I initiated my own project called Susti Foundation. And then I set up a Susti village, it is an inclusive village for children, people with a disability and for the non-disabled people who are all come together and doing the natural farming and generate their own food and income. And it's happening. It's a, it's a program that takes people in respect to of, you know, their physical abilities, right? You could be in a wheelchair, you can be blind, you can be a thing. The other thing is, we'll take people whether they have PhDs or they have 10th grade education, as long as they can communicate in English, have some basic math skills, that's all we require. Third is we take people, we like to take people who have gone through the difficulty that they want to solve. Right? For example, you know the case of domestic workers that go to the Middle East. They are almost treated like slaves. Their passports are taken, you know, the families abuse them. So we had a woman from Ethiopia that went through that experience and now wants to help other domestic workers. The local language, uh, we don't understand the history, you know, we, we don't know all that stuff because we are outsiders. But we bring people together and we train them in everything they need to know, all the skills and tools so that they can go back to their own place and start social impact making projects. And they speak the local language, they know the culture, they know the history, they know the problems. But the people that we work with, in most cases, they didn't have a chance to go and get training because they wouldn't be accepted because they might not have any degree or any, any diploma for that. Every year visas have to be arranged for the participants that are coming in and uh, he has been very helpful and supportive in that matter. Um, and well, we, we are here and we are allowed to do this so we're very happy that we can be for five months to get their project registered and to get started. Right? The reason for that is when you go back, you know, there's a lot of pressure. You know, they are coming from communities where you know they may be married, and the wife is like, "You've been gone for seven months. Now, time to start earning some money." <laughs> right. So, we give them a, a, a fixed stipend for five months to get them off the ground. Right. And this stipend is not just given to everybody. It is only given if they are doing the work of writing grant proposals. You know. So they're raising, uh, doing their fundraising so that in five months they're ready to fly out of the nest. You know, and do their Example, you know, so we have, we do have blind people and physically ch um, challenged or physically disabled, but most of the people um, have gone through other um, experiences in their life which make them um, engaged in, in social um, activities. Yeah. First of all, yeah. they learn how to speak. So it's not so boring. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very entertaining. But then also, they turn difficult life situations into something very, very positive. And in that way, they inspire a lot of people who might um, be concerned about every little nitty gritty thing uh, every day, right? So a lot of people come there and they go out and say, well, what, what problems do we have? Um, because they show ways how to um, basically handle prob uh, problems in a very, very positive and very energetic man <coughs> matter, uh, manner. So um, this year we are going to have 23 um, participants from 13 different countries who are talking about uh, their life stories and some of these life stories are, are really incredible. We have, for example, where there's one international chess player um, who has been locked away by her family uh, for her whole childhood to, uh, to be trained in chess. She became an international star later and now she wants to um, uh, change 
um, or tran uh, use chess as a transformative tool to integrate children with disabilities who are also locked away in her country 